This episode of Musket Matters is brought to you by the Vortex Ball Roller, the fastest way to prepare your round ball ammunition. Find out more at www.forth-armory.com. Howdy folks, welcome to another edition of Musket Matters. Today we're going to talk about making combustible cartridges for the 1859 Sharps carbine using the new Era's Gone bullet molds, Confederate Sharps bullet. Now full disclosure here, I do the mechanical design work for Era's Gone and so I get compensated for that. Uh, so just full disclosure right up front. Anyway, what this is, is it's a very close copy of a historical a Confederate Sharps carbine bullet. And what we're going to do is figure out how to make a combustible cartridge that uses that bullet. So one of the first things that we have to do uh, is determine our chamber length so that we can figure out how long the cartridge actually needs to be. Now, unlike the historical cartridge that had a folded tail that would get sheared off by the breech block when it, ri when it, when it rose up, we're going to make a, a, an ahistorical design that was historical for other types of Sharps carbine cartridges that has a flat back and the back of it is a, a lightweight tissue paper that's designed to be burned through by the blast of the percussion cap. And this was done with other variants of Sharps carbine cartridge and for our purposes, for competition purposes, it's a cleaner cartridge. You don't end up with spilled powder when the, when the breech block shears off the end of the tail. So this is probably going to be an ahistorical cartridge for the Confederate bullet. Um, in fact, the way I make this cartridge may not be historical in any, any event, but the idea uh, is historical in that and these bullets used a, a bullet, or these cartridges used a bullet, that was glued to a paper tube uh, and some of them were, were folded like traditional musket cartridges and were designed to be sheared off by the rising breech block and then the later design of these had a, like I said a, a tissue back end that would burn through but the entire cartridge was a combustible cartridge and so <clears throat> what when you loaded a cartridge into the into the breech and you fired it off there was nothing to extract so uh, there was no brass or rubber or any other kind of case. It just fully consumed and you just shoved the next cartridge in behind it. So it's kind of ahead of its time really because combust combustible cartridges are something that modern firearm manufacturers have been trying to use for a long time with limited success. So it's kind of ahead of its time in that regard. But in any case, one of the first things that we have to do in order to pull this off is we have to determine the length of our chamber uh, so that we can know how long our piece of paper needs to be. So, <clears throat> the way I do that is we will take a bullet and we'll drop it nose first into the chamber. And you can hear it go plunk when it drops down in there. So now we've got a bullet down in the chamber and it's all the way up against the rifling as far as it can go. Next, we're going to use a set of calipers here to determine the depth to the back of the bullet. Now you can pick up these from Harbor Freight, you know, for $10. If you don't have that, you know, you can use a dowel rod or something and push it down there and just mark it to get a length. But either way, we've got to figure out how deep in there the, the bullet is. So we're going to set this down till it bottoms out on the back of the bullet. And we'll just lower this down until it stops on the breech face. There we go. So we can see that we are 1.3 inches deep. And I had done this previously and measured 1.31. So we know that we've got 1.31 inches between the breech face and the back of the bullet. But we also have to account for the heel of the bullet, because if you look at these bullets, just like a revolver cartridge, it's a heeled bullet. And that shoulder is what the paper grips onto. So this fits down into the paper. So we have to account for that distance. So we got to get the bullet out of here. There we go. And now we're done with the carbine. So the next thing we have to do is figure out how much shoulder do we have to take away from that distance. 
or to add to it rather. So we've got about 0.27 inches worth of heel. So our paper tube has to go the distance to the back of the bullet plus the length of the heel. And that will give us a correct length cartridge. So I've already done the math here. We've got 1.31 inches plus the 0.27 inches of heel. That gives us a total cartridge length of 1.58 inches for the paper. <clears throat> so what we will do is we'll take our calipers and we'll set it to 1.58 inches. There we go. And we're going to mark our paper here at 1.58 inches. Then we'll take a straight edge. And we'll cut out that strip of paper. Now if this seems a little tedious, the good news is, <clears throat> is that there are uh, web pages on the web that will uh, let you create custom graph paper. And so once you know the dimensions of your cartridge, you can go to these websites, and I'll provide a link down below, and that um, website lets you make custom grid paper that has these dimensions on it. So you can just run them through your printer, and it will be printed out with a nice grid already on there. And you can put fancy little text on there, like, you know, Fred's Custom Sharps Cartridge, or 40 grains of powder, or whatever it is you want to put on there. But anyway, makes it a lot easier to cut them out. Okay, so now we have a piece of paper that is the correct length for our cartridge, okay? And now we have to figure out how long does it need to be to wrap around the dowel. Well, I've already done the work, and so you don't have to do this part. The answer is 1.89 inches, or just 1.9 inches. But just if you want to see how I arrived at this, <clears throat> here's how I did it. So I've got a dowel, and this dowel is about 0.52 inches in diameter. And since you can't buy a 0.52 inch dowel, I just took a half inch dowel and wrapped some masking tape around it until I got a diameter that matched the heel of my bullet. Okay, so that's how I made the mandrel, real simple. Okay, so the next thing to do is you wrap it on the, you wrap your paper, start it around the mandrel here, and make a mark and roll past it and you see your mark here well you want to go about you know an eighth of an inch beyond that so mark your piece of paper so that gives us some overlap okay and then you'll cut that like so and that's the correct that's going to give you a piece of paper that's got the right width so that when you wrap it up it's got some overlap Okay, so the next step is to take an Elmer's glue stick, looks like an oversized stick of chapstick, put some glue down, and then wrap that up. So there you go. Now you can see our cartridge and it's wrapped up. You slide it off the mandrel and you set those aside to dry. So that's how that works. So the next step is you've got your empty tubes and, and you can check it by the way and make sure that your bullet fits in there and it does. So the next step in making these cartridges is to um, add the, the back end, the tissue back end that the cap blast is going to burn through. And what a lot of people use for these and what I use for these are these Jumbo End Wraps by Sally Beauty. You can get them on Amazon or any of your local beauty shops or whatever. I have no idea what uh, role this plays in, in beauty salon stuff. All I know is it works great for making the back end of cartridges. So, you can either take these wraps and you can use scissors and, and you can do a whole bunch of them at once and you can cut them up into little squares but if you want to make them nice and neat and consistent, 
get a one inch hole punch. And I got this off of Amazon, it's a one inch hole punch. And it makes it really easy to punch through, you know, you can punch out a hundred of them in minutes with no effort at all. Just bang, 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 bang. I use a nylon cutting board and a, and a great big mini handheld sledge. And in, in two minutes, you've got um, hundreds ready to go. All right, so the next step is then you take one of these tissue ends and you take your mandrel and you fold the tissue over the end of the cartridge, uh, over the end of the mandrel. And then you take your, your tube that you've already glued up and let dry and you get it started, you know, push it about halfway through the tube, okay? And now you're going to take some Elmer's glue and pour yourself a little bit out in a little disposable container. Cap tins work great for that. And I take a Q-tip that I've cut the fuzzy end off of and just a little dab of glue is all you need. You don't want to overdo it. And you smear that around the inside of the end of the tube. And then you push the mandrel up until it's flush and I kind of twist as I go so it smears the glue around. And you roll it between your fingers so you get good contact. And then you back the mandrel out. And <clears throat> now you've glued in a little tissue wad there, barrier, at the end of your cartridge. And that's going to keep the gunpowder from falling out, obviously. But it's also nice and fragile. So the percussion cap usually blasts through it. Now misfires are not uncommon with the sharps and when it happens you just cap it and go again and eventually it goes off. But probably happens one out of every 20 times. Um, I, this gun has had some work done up by a Mr. Larry Fleas. He remachines the fire channel hardware, the, the, the um, clean out screw and the fire cone on the front of the, of the breech block to eliminate any machining nooks and crannies that were left behind by the usual manufacturing. All those nooks and crannies tend to uh, absorb some of the cat blast. It gets lost in those nooks and crannies instead of going out into the chamber like you want. So his machining job makes the, the gun far more um, reliable. I probably went, went from, you know, I don't know, 1 in 10 misfires to maybe 1 in 30 misfires. So his work definitely uh, pays off in competition when it really matters. Um, all right, so now we've got some tubes here, a couple of them here that have been capped off with the tissue. And so the next step would be to charge these, okay? So in charging them, that one's already glued with a bullet. That one's glued with a bullet. So in charging them, uh, you basically take your cartridge and you have a, a tray with a bunch of holes in them and you set all your tubes in them and you pour in your cart your uh, charge and then what I normally do is I glue a wad a little cardboard wad I punch them out of cereal boxes on top of the charge that way when the charge when the cartridge is sitting in the chamber the, the powder isn't you know rolling back and forth or going down to the front of the cartridge where maybe the cap won't be able to ignite it now this wasn't a problem with military cartridges because military cartridges, they were filled to the rim, okay? So you couldn't get any more charge, uh, powder in there. The whole idea was to have a maximum military charge in your cartridge. So they didn't have to worry about that. But we will probably find, and I'm, I haven't done a load workup yet, that's the next step. We will probably find that these bullets, like most of these, these uh, re reproduction guns, and originals too for that matter, generally you don't get maximum accuracy with the maximum full military charge. So you end up having to do a load workup and discover, you know, what is the best, what gives you the best group. So once you discover that, you, you pour in that charge and then you glue a, a little cardboard disc, you, you lay it down on top of the charge and use the Q-tip again, a little dab of glue and you run it around there and, and glue that down in there. I can't show you that with these cartridges right now because my usual Sharps cartridge uses a half inch dowel. Well, I've got a half inch hole punch, so I can easily punch out half inch wads out of cereal box cardboard. But this is a little bit bigger. These are about point, like I said, about 0.52 inches in diameter. And so I don't have a punch for that to make a good fitting wad. Well, it turns out a 13 millimeter punch 
is about the right size and get a metric punch. So I'm waiting for that to arrive and then we'll do a follow-on video here about how to do your load workups. But for now, the main thrust of this video was how to size your, your, uh, your paper, how to find the right dimensions for your paper to make your cartridge. And we have done that. The next step would be just to swirl some Elmer's glue on the base of that bullet and put it in there. And, and that's a combustible cartridge. And so after you've done that, and we'll take one of these guys and show you what it should look like when you put it in the chamber. When you're on the line, you take your cartridge And I don't know if you can see that, but the back end of that cartridge is now flush with the breech block. And so now, when you raise the breech, bleach, <laughs> breech block up, it's right flush against the fire cone. So when that percussion cap goes off, it's going to blast right through that tissue and bang, off it goes. So that's the way you, you use these cartridges once you've found the right load worked up for them. So, that's it. That's how you make or design, figure out your dimensions for your combustible cartridges for any kind of bullet that you might be using, whether it's a, a ringtail bullet, a Christmas tree type bullet, or uh, one of these new healed type bullets from Arrows Gone Bullet Molds. So there you have it. Hopefully you found this useful. Be sure to check in, subscribe down below, and we're going to have some follow on videos here when I get my punch. We'll figure out you know, how to do an actual load workup and make fully charged functional cartridges and figure out which one of these charges gives us the best group with this new bullet. Really excited about this bullet, by the way, because it's a double cavity mold, uh, mold really cranks out the bullets. So I'm, I'm hoping we get some good results. Thanks a lot. We'll see you next time.